Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. We're one month away from Deontay Wilder facing Tyson Fury at the Staples Center on December 1st. And the undercard for that fight, well, it's not looking good. It's looking way for thin at this point. And I don't just mean in terms of the amount of fights, but especially in terms of the quality. From what we know so far, it's thin. So if you look here on Box Rec, so this is some of what has been announced so far. Obviously, Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, that fight's not an issue. That's a great fight. We want to see it. That's why it's on pay-per-view. But uh, the other couple of fights so far and other information that has come out, not so good. So Chris Ariola versus TBA. Uh, not really sure how many people want to see Ariola coming back at all. This is a comeback fight. Last fought Deontay Wilder in mid-2016. Wilder effectively retired him for a time. Uh, we've also got Isaac Lowe facing Christian Palmer. And I understand that these two fights will be on the non-televised part of the card. So there also has been some other stories that have come out saying that uh, Jarrett Hurd is going to be facing Jason Wellborn and Joe Joyce is going to be facing Joe Hanks. And what we also know is that Luis Ortiz's manager has confirmed that Ortiz will be facing Travis Kaufman, but that's not currently up on box rec, and I'm not sure if there has been an official announcement on that, but apparently that is a lock. So Luis Ortiz, Travis Kaufman, and these reported fights of Jared Hurd versus Jason Wellborn and Joe Joyce versus Joe Hanks. And when this came out about Joe Hanks and Joe Joyce, I was a little bit surprised on that because there was um, some sort of counter information running in the media on Sky Sports. So, uh, and this was at the sort of a, about the same time. So Joyce had said um, he's a very big guy that brings the heat and he's very sturdy and durable. Uh, it's still in negotiations to agree a fight with Gerald Washington. That's what I'm aiming to do. That's what I'm trying to do. Make statements. He's a good, solid heavyweight, and he's a step up for me, but I can overcome that challenge. And this story actually came out after a tweet. Well, there was some information from Joe Joyce's manager that was reported in the media and on Twitter. See, Michael Benson here had said, Joe Joyce's manager has indicated that Gerald Washington officially turned down the fight on the Wilder Fury card. Joe Hanks has been mentioned as a potential alternative. So I guess that's far from definitive that it's going to be Joe Hanks, but it's not exactly a fight if that is the one that they do end up confirming. That's not the fight that we wanted to see Joe Joyce in. And you may well remember, Luis Ortiz was due to face Joe Hanks earlier this year, but Hanks had to pull out. And uh, Raz Van Kajanu came in as a late replacement and he ended up getting knocked out by Ortiz. And actually Kajanu, in my view, was a step up or a better opponent than Joe Hanks. So if we have uh, Joe Joyce going on to face Joe Hanks, you know, that just kind of, I don't want to say a stay busy fight because uh, in terms of Joe Joyce's career, obviously he's still a prospect, 6-0, he's looking to take steps up. He fought Iago Kaladze last time out. Um, and Joe Hanks is probably on a similar level to Kaladze, potentially a minor step up, but certainly he is not anywhere near as good as Gerald Washington. And if Joe Joyce had designs on making a big statement, you know, obviously fighting Gerald Washington would have been that. And if he'd have fought Washington, got through him, that would have set himself up for a very big 2019. Potentially, there could have been some good contender-level fights there for him. They obviously, at 33, want to accelerate Joe Joyce. So the potential news that there could be, you know, Joe Hanks, that's not exactly exciting me. And Luis Ortiz, Travis Kaufman, yeah, that's just okay. I mean, Kaufman, he is solid enough. Joe Hanks, he is also just solid enough. Nothing special. I mean, Joe Joyce should be able to beat Joe Hanks. Um, effectively, Joe Joyce is really a contender disguised as a prospect at the moment. And, you know, effectively, he is a fringe contender of sorts at the moment rather than a low level prospect. But he needed a guy like Washington to really accelerate things because eff effectively, he's going to have to wait another couple of months at least to get a proper fight at the level that he wants to fight at. So I'm a little bit disappointed that it's not going to be Gerald Washington if Joe Joyce's manager, if that is correct, that statement that has been reported. 
Yeah, Joe Hanks, Joe Joyce. Yeah, that's just okay. Luis Ortiz versus Travis Kaufman. Again, just okay. You know, Ortiz, obviously a heavy favorite there. But then you go Chris Ariola as well. I mean, that's going to be a nothing fight. No one was going to pay to see him anyway. So it's kind of gone from an event where there was going to be four heavyweight fights, potentially four really good heavyweight fights too one good heavyweight fight and three where it looks like they're almost a stay busy type fights and then also having Jarrett Hurd on the card I mean that's good but if it is Jason Wellborn for his opponent I mean well that's a disappointing opponent and it is just a stay busy type of fight so that kind of adds to the if Joyce is effectively staying busy versus Joe Hanks Luis Ortiz is effectively staying busy against Travis Kaufman Jarrett Hurd is effectively staying busy against Jason Wellborn and then you've got Chris Ariola versus Who Cares. And then it says here as well, I think it said there was going to be a strawweight title fight on here as well. I mean, the card is looking incredibly thin. It's not the sort of card that it was, you know, sort of potentially billed to be. And it reminds me actually of the recent Anthony Joshua and Alexander Povetkin card. And the few weeks in the lead up to that, a lot of people were saying, geez, this is looking pretty thin. And it turned out to be thin. Apart from the actual title fight itself, there wasn't much of note or wasn't much to really hold the viewer. Some of them weren't good fights. We didn't see David Price getting stretched out like we were hoping for. He ended up, you know, retiring on a stool. So that sort of robbed us of some drama. And, we, you know, a lot of people were expecting David Price to either come up with an upset or get spectacularly knocked out. But it didn't happen. And then some of the rest of the fights, they're just rather ho-hum. And I'm starting to get the feeling that this card is going to be a little bit the same. So I'm interested to see what happens with the official announcements sort of filling out, fattening out this card. Is there going to be another fight added, something that is going to sort of captivate us? But it's only a month to go, so there is limited time now. So you don't want to leave these things too late. And at a month's notice, it'd be hard to see any real big name fighter big name contender taking on someone decent here so you know it looks like it might be a bit of a missed opportunity in some regards it's, it'll still be a good event overall but I just wonder if this is going to be the sum total you know Jared Hurd in a stay busy fight Luis Ortiz and Joe Joyce in similar type fights how is that going to captivate casual fans it's almost solely relying on the main event and Deontay Wilder has never sold a pay-per-view event before and, uh, you know, he's relying on his star power and, uh, and Tyson Fury star power. Is that enough? It'd be different if you had a killer on the card that was against someone else that you thought, yeah, this is a real 50-50 fight or this is a fight we've been waiting to see. But I'm not seeing any of that so far. It's looking incredibly thin and it's kind of disappointing. And if you're going to end up paying, you know, 50 60 $70, I would have thought you'd want a little bit more fat in there. But, you know... I reserve some judgment for now, but at this stage, it's not looking good. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out. If you want even more boxing content, come and join me on Patreon. Every week on a Sunday, I drop a new video on something topical or thought-provoking from the heavyweight division, ranging from rankings, the business of boxing, the false economy of deluded fanboys, the twists and turns in the division to assessments of fighters and their statements. I hope to see you there. And for more information, go to patreon.com forward slash boxing squared. The address is on screen now.